Hello, my name is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, here to provide your news update for July 8th, 2020. I do hope you're making the most of Wednesday today. Um, starting with coal news, Wyoming environmental regulators have approved the first new coal mine in the state in decades. Um, the Department of Environmental Quality announced on Tuesday that it will issue a coal mining permit to Brook Mining Company, LLC, um, to mine for coal just north of Sheridan. Um, story notes that this um, uh, permitting process has lasted for years, requiring much internal review and, of course, uh, public debate. The company anticipates employing 30 to 40 miners when it first opens. And the company, of course, has to post a $1.4 million bond for future cleanup before it can start mining. And other news, not just my cat jumping around the bookshelves. University of Wyoming Athletic Director Tom Berman um, says that there is a 50-50 chance that football will start all, as planned. Um, and at this point, all options remain on the table. Um, in an interview with Wild Sports, um, which is one of our uh, sister Wyoming journalism uh, components, uh, he told reporters that he believes the odds of college football um, starting on time is, it, it, could go, it's, it could go either way. But for now, um, UW football pro programming or program is operating as if the season will start as scheduled on September 5th against Weber State at War Memorial Stadium. It's been noted that um, thus far, uh, University of Wyoming has yet to record a positive test amongst its student athletes or staff. And with that in mind, um, the plan is for mandatory football workouts to commence next week and the fall camp to begin in August, as it often does. Um, the athletic director notes that the university has not made a decision to stop the season and it's not in a hurry to do so. Quote, we are not in panic mode, end quote. Um, there are certainly other um, universities um, and college conferences that are also still deciding what it wants to do. And um, it's one of those things where this remains a fluid situation. Um, we certainly know that we want sports to be back. Uh, we could use some good news, we could use some distractions, but we want sports to come back safely for the people playing and for the people watching. And whether that's gonna come with extra distancing um, or checks, temperature checks, I, I, I naturally burn a little bit hot, hotter than average and I always worry that I'm gonna be too much in a hurry and I'm gonna um, have an issue with that, but if that's what it takes to uh, to put us in a place where we continue forward and not lose any progress, I, I think these are simple trade-offs. Um, turning to um, the numbers, um, according to the Wyoming Department of Health, when it comes to Cowboy State figures, we're at 1,404 laboratory confirmed cases. Um, 336 probable cases. Uh, the death count sits at 21 people. Um, they added to that yesterday. Um, and in Sweetwater County, we are up to 114 lab confirmed cases and 10 probable. And forgive me, I, I don't have the recovery numbers in the same place. Let me pull those up as well. In addition, it's a um, in addition to all that, statewide, we're now at 1,291 recovered cases in our state. In Sweetwater County, 
Um, the Department of Health is reporting 84 recoveries locally. Um, transitioning on to national numbers as provided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We're now sitting at 2,982,900 total cases, which is an increase of 50,304 compared to yesterday. I'd anticipate we will surpass 3 million total cases tomorrow. Total deaths are now at 131,065 people, and that's 932 new deaths compared to yesterday. Globally, John Hopkins University is reporting that total confirms at up to 11,994,182. The death tolls is at 547,931 people. And global recoveries is now at 6,533,436. Now, today, Governor Mark Gordon, uh, State Health Officer Dr. Alexia Harris, and others had their semi regular um, media update. Um, you can certainly see that video on YouTube, online, among other places. Um, I wrote down a few notes while. Uh, watching the conference. Um, the governor said, our numbers keep rising, and I think that is of concern. Um, and he talked about how uh, he added a new viewpoint to how he was looking at things. He talked about having um, attended the change of, change of command ceremony um, um, recently at F.E. Warren and talked about how he was thinking how um, keeping people safe, keeping our numbers low, um, in addition to um, the emotional and the economic impact that we've already, um, uh, us and others have talked about, that that's a matter of national security. He um, just talked about the scenario where what if it hit the base um, and cases were or it's, um, boomed and perhaps like the missileers were especially were impacted. What would that do to um, the nation's ability to keep an eye on things, to defend itself? Like I said, national security is, is something that he said that he hadn't fully thought about before. And in addition, I mean, it's just something about business. He note, noted that um, if a community gets hit, or maybe in a smaller business like a daycare and kids have to stay at home, that impacts the parents, grandparents that have to scramble to um, take care of the care gap or business itself. What if it gets in an office and things have to close down for a while? We really don't want to see widespread closures again of any kind. And the governor keeps, and others keep stressing that that's on us to, um, make every attempt we can to wear a face covering, social distance, have good hygiene. Um, he said, um, one other point the governor talked about is um, the impact that this is having on the budget and how he'll, he'll be meeting with um, state officials to go over um, some hard numbers. And he said that there was going to be cuts made that are gonna have impact. He said most likely there's it's some of the ones he specifically cited would be funding for mental health, um, care of children, especially those who are a little bit older but still not old enough to take care of themselves, um, things like that. Um, the governor said the level of service that the state can give its citizens will be reduced. Um, the governor was also asked a little bit about. Um, education in Wyoming. This comes on the heels of President Donald Trump and um, Secretary of Education Betsy Davros talking about their expectations that schools um, are all in person and and open this year. Um, not wanting that's trying to push back against virtual schooling. Um, governor said that they were taking this in mind. Um, noted how uh, Secretary of Schools um, Jillian Ballow had already talked about how they had a framework and 
the hope is, is that school can continue in person. That's where things stand right now. But that the plan has other degrees, that there can be a hybrid system where it can be a little bit in person, a little bit virtual. And in some cases, we really don't want to see them. It could go back to buildings being closed to students um, and being back online only. Um, um, at, the um, at that time, um, the secretary of schools and governor both stressed the importance of leaving it to the people on the ground. And today, uh, Governor Mark Borden said, we want to make sure that we have the flexibility for school districts to decide what is best. Um, Dr. Alexia Harris answered a number of questions. Um, honestly, just reinforcing stuff that we've heard many times before, such as everyone is at risk of the illness and everyone is at risk of spreading it to somebody who's vulnerable, whether that's them personally or people they come into contact with. She said the core recommendations remain the same and more important than ever. Um, one other quick topic that came up was the question of um, restrictions. Um, there are certainly a few communities that are looking at um, putting in um, more strict requirements than the state has in place, particularly when it comes to face masks and whatnot. Uh, we've seen Jackson make that move, um, and other bodies have been discussing it. Our own Sweetwater County Commission yesterday discussed the possibility, and right now decided that they're going to go with the, they strongly recommend wearing face masks, uh, especially when those are in public buildings or, or in county facilities, but it's not going to be required at this time. Um, that other city councils around the state have debated it, uh, and we'll see what happens with those. And to be able to have a stricter requirement than the state has, that requires an exception. In the same way that if you want to have looser guidelines than what the state has, that requires an exception. And one thing Dr. Alexia Harris stressed is that they look at, they try to find solutions that they believe to be necessary and appropriate, um, neither too much nor too, too little. And she said that one thing they do take into account would be, is there support for the community? Um, adding that um, having the public support and as much voluntary compliance as possible, that makes these interventions more successful. As in, if you don't have buy-in for the public, it's a lot harder to see these changes, see a positive impact. Not saying that's required, but it's something that they do take into account. Oh, um, one thing to end on, uh, it's, I've seen this meme a couple times, but it, it passed up, on my, it popped up on my social media again. Uh, maybe you've seen this too, the, uh, the little note that says, um, today you could be standing next to someone who is trying their best and doing everything they can not to fall apart. There are or more than a few of us, and I'm going to include myself in that number, who uh, we're, there are some days or even some moments where it's you're feeling a little bit closer to the edge. And we don't necessarily know if the person we're next to in line, um, the, the person at the next desk over, um, somebody that we encounter at the gas station or when we're it's out, out front in front of our house or something like that. If that brief interaction, that could be that could be something that turned their day around into something positive. That maybe just a little bit of friendliness or compassion or patience is really what they need in that moment. And alternatively, a little bit of venom or discourteousness rudeness, attitude, just your tone could be what sends them that much closer to the edge. It's really the type of thing that we should be looking for what, for opportunities we can to show compassion, to be kind.
because we're all operating under a lot more stress than usual. And this crucible, this trial, it's, we don't know when it's gonna end. So just, just think about what, what you could do to hopefully bolster, hold up, or at the least just not do any more damage to the people around you. This is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, wishing you a good day and a safe tomorrow.